two and one on the show yesterday. Let's see if we can make it a clean three and oh sweep today. Mark Zeno and I back in the saddle again. The world is yeah. all right. Everything is right with the world is what I meant to oh. say with you and I together live this week. Last week, the world was kind of falling off its gravitational axis, I believe. Well, but, yeah. you know, uh, you know, framber is the color of your energy is what we always it say, is. Mark Zeno. And what a pitching matchup we have today. Framber Valdez, Dylan Cease, Houston, San Diego. I lost on this game last night. I don't want to discuss that with the Padres failed to do in the bottom of the 10th. Couldn't push a guy home uh, when there were no outs and a runner on third. But you're going to talk about the total in this potential World Series preview. That's what I called it my analysis yesterday. What do you think between Cease and Valdez? Well, your analysis yesterday stunk. And I love how you like to bury the lead sometimes. And you try to do this cute little thing where you get me to get right into the show. Yet I kind of have to do my little diatribe before we get started. Our one loss yesterday, I'm going to blame you. And I'm going to blame you publicly for that to the to the morning wager. No, wait, no, because you denied your own handicapping existence. If there was ever a Brian Power play yesterday, okay, was to take the over seven between the Yankees and Mariners. I said it to you before the show. You're like, ah, let's do the under. Let's do I go. I gave you, I gave you all the scores. I said, oh, here's five runs. Here's four runs. Here's six runs. Here's two runs. You're like, yep, definitely taking the over in this one. And you and you strayed from yourself and it got you burned. I just want you to know that. So it's okay. I'm still friends. Let's get back to Framber because he is the color of your energy. Only at home, though. Not on the road. We're in the same situation. The only reason I brought up that game last night that we lost was because same thing here. You get a total of seven in this game between two very good pitchers, Framber Valdez and Dylan Cease. Well, Framber is not the same guy on the road as he is at home, like many guys are. His ERA is over 1.2 runs higher. Okay, the batting average jumps up 20 points. You know, the walks per uh, innings pitch jump up. The Ks are down. Right? All those numbers change on the road. So, guess what? San Diego, San, San Diego, San Diego, um, you know, they are a good hitting team across the board. Um, and, and particularly, guess what? You know, they are, they are not terrible against lefties, but they're not great. And, oh, by the way, they have one of the lowest – they have the lowest K rate against lefties at home this year. So, the one thing Framber does well, they can counteract. Right? So – I am good with San Diego being able to put some runs up early. Not only that, Dylan Cease, who starts for the San Diego Padres, as good as he's been, he's had some stinkers along the way, right? That 3 5 8 ERA isn't by accident. Of course, look, last start, six innings, four hits, no runs. The one before that, six innings, six hits, four runs. So you can get to Cease. It's not impossible. He's not, you know, Cy Young or Sandy Koufax by any stretch of the imagination. Or um, Bowden and Francis. That too, yes. And oh, by the way, Dylan sees this year at home, just five and seven. So he hasn't been great. Um, so all that to me with this low of a total, give me the over. Give me over seven. I mean, we, we can get a push out of this thing at four, three, five, two, whatever it may be. But just like last night between the Yankees and Seattle, we get runs here enough to go over this very, very low number. I feel personally attacked with your pot shot at my analysis. You can attack the results, but never attack the analysis. I always think I provide an excellent analysis. I am uh, also, by the way, yeah, can oh, I, just I was attacked. No, no, no hold on a second. Can I, like, can I can I speak, please? Can I speak? I, 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 mean, am, also, <laughs> I, am, also, I am also not the same man on the road as I am at home, but that's a different story sure. for a different day. Smash that like button yes. if you agree with Mark Zeno taking the over in Padres Astros despite uh, the two outstanding starting pitchers. Hey, everyone liked uh, Heel and Woo yesterday. Look at what happened there. That game went over quickly. All right, I was going to get into my half of double play, but it sounds like you have something else you would like to add before we do that. No, no, I mean, I, I will, I will, I will wait till you're done with your analysis before the end of the show, and I will then take pot shots at random people who don't know I'm talking about them. <laughs> okay, hold on for that, everybody. Our show best bet is also coming up as well as we're taking the run line against a very controversial favorite. Oh, yeah, we're going to, uh, I'm <laughs> going to hell in a bucket, but at least I'm enjoying the ride, like Jerry Garcia said. Anyway, Cleveland Guardians, Minnesota Twins, AL Central. I'll be at the game tomorrow, Zeno. So uh, if anyone else is in Cleveland area, uh, you can always stop by and say hi. You know where I'll be. Uh, but this is a critical matchup. 
the rubber match uh, here uh, as each team has recorded a win. Cleveland wins Monday. They rallied in the bottom of the eighth. No team has more come from behind victories this year than the Guardians. You know, they have 40 of them, and they have not lost a game in over a year when going into the ninth inning with the lead, but they did not have the lead going into the ninth inning last night. The Twins actually hit a key home run in the eighth, and they won four to one. So really big game here. Guardians, they're in better uh, playoff position, obviously, than the Twins. The Twins are just desperately hanging on to that last wild card in the AL. We know about the home field advantage with Cleveland, don't we? 46 and 28 uh, is the home team at Progressive Field this season. Let's talk about Tanner Bybee. Okay, he has been outstanding at home this year. At least the record's been outstanding. He's also been outstanding against Minnesota. Team's 3-0 and when he starts against the Twins. 1.50 ERA in those three starts. He's allowed just one earned run each time out. 18 innings pitch total. 22 strikeouts. Bailey Ober, remember that great run he had, Mark, uh, yeah. a few weeks ago? Well, he's starting to regress a little bit. 5.85 ERA last five starts. The and Ober run is five- over. The, the overrun over is over. Oh. Yes. Yeah. He allowed he allowed five earned runs his last time out. Interesting. Uh, his day-night splits, 4.82 ERA at night, 2.90 ERA in the daytime. This game is in at night. Slight starting yes. pitching edge for the Guardians. Big edge in the bullpen for the Guardians as it is every game. And they are great at home. They're not losing two in a row at home. This is a client play, Mark Zeno. I'm giving you my only client play today for free on the morning wager. 3%. Cleveland Guardians play us up to minus one thirty on the money line. Look at that! You're just a just a wonderful thing. I mean, I, that uh, that was a that was a hell of a breakdown. I hope that cash is for you. Thank you. I, I don't don't be facetious with me. Okay. <laughs> I want the oh. show to go three you know, every day. Why? Because results matter, and getting more right than wrong is the most important thing in this business, not anything else. <laughs> You have a beautiful face, by the way. All right. (laughs) Anyway, um, drop your favorite bets for Wednesday in Major League Baseball uh, down below. We'd love to see them. Uh, Our best bet, again, coming up in just a minute. Let us know what you're thinking about for football for the weekend, too. We'll be talking football again starting tomorrow, Thursday night football. Patriots and Jets. Tough spot for both teams, quite frankly. I'll have more on that yesterday. I will tell you, it's Jets are a good survivor pick this week. If you want to get them at it, but it might be a public one. Um, I have, so by the way, just in case people were wondering while you brought this up, Circus Survivor, 14,000 injuries, 75% of the pool out in two weeks. 75% of Survivor entries dead in two weeks. Yeah. I had three entries. I'm down to one. My God. Yes. I saw that. God. Yes. I saw, I saw that that was a record breaking the record from uh, la- two years ago. Uh, the amount of entries that had dropped out over two weeks. It's a tough game, man. Yeah, underdogs ruled the day in week two of the NFL. That was 4-0 in the NFL uh, in week two. Oh, by the way, my baseball record leaves a lot to be desired. I'm great in football and football. Okay. This baseball thing, we got to get it on track. That's why I gave you my play for free today. Thank you for a little What's self-deprecation. That? Okay, you're always sitting here pumping yourself up. I wonder why your hair gets so big. Because you just, psh, 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 psh. yeah, I mean, you know, listen, you know, you should feel lucky because your picture is actually on the wager talk screen. When they put all the handicappers out there, Brian Powers' face is out there. You know whose face is not out there? This guy. They, oh, oh, yeah, him too. The only difference between him and I is I don't tweet about it like a little bitch. Oh, come on. That's out of line. Why would you do that? Kill yes, that. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, yeah. There we go. Yes, there. That's me right now. I'm stum- shoving a hot dog in my mouth. I got to get out of here. Let's do the show yeah, best bet. We've got- the only thing worse than some sort of sticky bet thing, okay, is complaining that you're not being noticed for your bets. Stop. Okay? Exactly. <laughs> She has a podcast. We went over that earlier in the week. All right. Jerry Nero was here yesterday. I can't listen to her talk. Like, honestly. I could listen to her a hawk to her. I can't listen to her talk to her. Okay. Well, there we go. Can we listen? Uh, what about the ball? I don't want to upset you, but we're going to talk about the Baltimore Orioles now. Yeah, okay. Let's talk about these- Jack uh, Wagon. Hashtag, hashtag Birdland. It's not going too well. Poor Zitto's sweating out his season win total bet tonight. Uh, or for the rest of the year. Tonight, um, look, we talked about this before the show, of course, as we always talk before the show. It's a little pricey, Mark, but taking the Giants on the run line here, plus one and a half, is the way to go. Not only is Baltimore three and eight its last 11 games, 
They're only averaging Probably. two runs per game during those yeah. last 11. So a one and a half a run head start hit. seems good. Talk to me. God had a freaking hit. So can we just, before we get into this, just, can I just, um, you know, have a second? It was September 3rd, Tuesday, September 3rd. And I remember it well. Because on Monday, September 2nd, which was my birthday, I played the Orioles and laid the one and a half with them against the Chicago White Sox. Ching cash. The next day, I said, you know what? The Orioles are going to score a whole bunch of runs again. Why? Because the White Sox pitching is terrible. Ching. Nine nothing win. At that point in time, they had had 81 wins. I have the Orioles season win total at 90 and a half over. They needed 10 wins from September 3rd. As you have said, since that point, they have gone three and eight, can't hit the damn ball. And guess what? They now have 11 games left, and I need them to go seven and four in the final 11 games for them to cash this bet. And oh, by the way, the last six games that they play are on the road against the Yankees and the Twins, who the Yankees are going to try to be clinched the AL East, and the Twins are going to be trying to fight for their playoff positioning. This bet is dead. So what do we do now, Brian Power? Start hammering the other way. San Francisco <laughs> plus one and a half. That's how we're going to make our money back. San Francisco plus one and a half. Dean Kramer, there's one word to describe him. You know what it is, Brian Power? Hump. Okay? He stinks. Here's the thing about Dean Kramer. Um, the last, let's call, what is it, eight starts now? Six starts. So he's had two bad ones against Toronto mm -hmm. and Cleveland, two good ones against the Mets and the Nationals. Two bad ones against Colorado and Houston. Two good ones against Tampa Bay and Boston. Dean Kramer's a home. Time for the bad ones to show back up. We think they do tonight. We're going to take the best bet you can in baseball because that's how you become the top capper three of the last four years by taking the best bet in baseball possible and you take the plus one and a half with the San Francisco Giants and we're going to make some money tonight. We're going to get that season over win bet that we're going to lose. We're going to get that money back right now. I like Hayden Bird's song, despite his record. I know I don't even want to hear your thoughts on his name, okay? The starter for the Giants, but Hayden Bird's song's going to give if a good... If your last name is Bird song, just name him Fred. Something just, you know, something manly. You know, Justin, Fred, Chris. Hayden. Hayden Bird's song. Hayden. Gonna have a good outing tonight. Giants run line. Let us know what you think of that down in the comment section below. Let us uh, know what uh, you think of Mark Zinno. And his Baltimore Orioles season win bet. Well, Mark, would you like to promote anything on your way out the door? Hey, by the way, I want to thank everybody for buying my $5 package yesterday. 5% best bet college football first one of the year. It'll be up all week long for you guys to get if you missed it. But I don't mind you guys spending $5 on me. 29 we have a list of things you should probably do. <laughs> all right. On that note, we'll be back tomorrow, Thursday night football. Let's cash the tickets. Always got my back.